All right, let's go back to Exodus. We're going to go back to Exodus 31, and we're going to start there, and we're going to pick up just, uh, we've, we finished up the Sabbath studies last time, and I just want to grab something here out of Exodus 13, and we're going to move forward and look at uh, really uh, what uh, the, you can call them the Feast of the Lord, the Feast of the Lord. I call it the calendar of redemption. There, there's a schedule here. We'll spend a couple weeks doing this. Um, if you're online, there should be a handout on the website already posted for you. Um, and you can get the handout from there, but uh, we're pretty, pretty straightforward here. Uh, Exodus 13, verse 12. I'm sorry, 31. Exodus 31, 12. Read the handout. Don't listen to me. Go follow the handout, okay? Exodus 31, 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore. And again, notice there's a plurality in verse 13, and then there's a singular in verse number 14. The Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath, that's what we've been looking at, was designed for Israel. And by the way, it did not exist until Israel was on board. The Sabbath, even, even though the, 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 uh, in Genesis 2, on the seventh day, he rested, called it the Sabbath, sanctified it holy, set it apart, <coughs> excuse me, and so forth. He didn't institute it. We looked last time how it, that starts only with the nation of Israel. Because now he has his people who are then going to go in and they're going to function and they're going to do what the Sabbath day was originally designed to do. And that is where God is going to come now and dwell with his creation. The six days he does the creation work. The seventh day he rests. The next Sabbath day he was going to do what Revelation 21 eventually he will do. And that is bring his home his city and put it on the earth and be Emmanuel God with us now we looked in Psalms uh, 104 where he in the creation he laid his beams out there in the and he laid the pillar work set in the waters for his city to come and sit on the next week now Thursday and I wish I showed you why I think it's Thursday but Thursday of the next week Adam and Eve fall sin enters in complicates it so on the next Sabbath, he doesn't come back. Now he's got to go and do something else. So when we, we're we picking up on that issue of the Sabbaths there in verse 13, by the way, if you look at verse 15, by the well, if you look at verse 14, you shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Every one that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. This is very serious. <coughs> and because it's very serious, it's important to understand it. Um, and, and I know, uh, <coughs> you go back there to Colossians 2, verse, <coughs> verse 16 and 17, where Paul says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ, and, and we're, we're not talking about us, we're talking about Israel, and we understand that. Then in verse, back here in Exodus 31, verse 15, six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord, whosoever doth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. I mean, this is serious business. Verse 17, it is a sign between me and the children. So the sign of the Mosaic Covenant is the Sabbath day. That's the sign of the Mosaic Covenant. Remember when we went through the covenants, I gave you those signs for each one. Now, by the way, the, the national symbol for Israel is the burning bush, not the Star of David, which isn't really the Star of David, it's really the Star of Moloch, a, 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 a pagan god system. Okay? So... <coughs> In, in Exodus, the issue with Israel is that bush. Now, when we get done looking at Leviticus 26 and Leviticus 23, we're going to go look at their national anthem because they do have a national anthem. Okay, They do have songs that they're going to sing. 
and so forth, and we'll spend some time with that. Come over with me to Leviticus chapter number one. As w when we now gonna we're gonna go and turn to what verse thirteen called Sabbaths, the plurality. But, and as we do, we, we're gonna go to Leviticus twenty three and Leviticus twenty six. But Leviticus one one, I, I, I just want you to notice something. Leviticus one one. What's the first word? And. This is a continuation of the book of Exodus. This information isn't, it's going to be new to Israel, but it's not a break in thought. It's the next thing. Uh, come over to Numbers chapter number 1. Numbers chapter number 1. <coughs> now you got me doing it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> verse number 1. Numbers 1 verse 1. What's the first word? And. and. Yes, it's and. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the tabernacle of the congregation on the first day of the second month. Notice that. What happens in the first month? That's the Leviticus, book of Leviticus. The second month, here comes Numbers. Okay? So when you come back to Leviticus, my and by the way, Numbers is more information, again, connected to coming out of Exodus. It's just the next month. Because what happens in Leviticus is you begin to, he begins to deal with the nation of Israel because they messed up at Mount Sinai. All that you say we'll do, we'll do. So he gives them the law, gives them the commandment. And, and literally in the first 17 chapters of the, of the book of Leviticus, God gives them the foundation of their fellowship. And it's in the first five chapters, in those first five, those sacrifices. Chapter 1, you have the burnt offering. Chapter 2, you have the meat offering. Chapter 3, you have the peace offering. 4 is the sin offering. 5, chapter 5 is a trust. So you've got all these sacrifices that, they set, that he sets up. And it's so that they can have fellowship with him. Why? They're sinners. They're in trouble. Then you start in chapter 18, and you go down there through chapter 27, and you have that walk of fellowship. Not only do you have the foundation of their fellowship, now you have their walk, and literally what Israel's walk is designed to do is to produce their separation. So I say all that so that you understand that you know, there's a lot of going on in Leviticus, even though we're going to move to two chapters mainly this evening, and then we're going to concentrate on one. When you come to the book of Leviticus, come over to chapter 26. <clears throat> chapter 23, go to 23 first, let's, and we'll get to 26. I just want to read one verse with you, and then we're going to look at something here. In the book of Leviticus, there are two great prophetic chapters, as they're going to look out ahead, that we need to get <clears throat> tonight. We'll get chapter 26 in our, in our thinking, because what chapter 26 does is it, it is it lays out, here's the reason why Israel needs to be redeemed. Chapter 23 says, here's how God is going to redeem them. Okay? Israel needs to be redeemed. <clears throat> here's how God's going to do it. Now, what we're going to focus on is 23, on how God's going to do it. And then after that, we'll go and look at 26 in detail and see what's going on with the five courses of judgment. Okay? <clears throat> and by the way, those judgments, there are five of them, and they line up with the five peace offerings, the five offerings, and, and there's correlations all through all that, okay? Uh, what did I tell you, Leviticus 23? Just look real quick at verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord. <clears throat> there's seven of them which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feast. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. So what is a holy convocation? It's a special day where no work's done. Okay? It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. These are the feast of the Lord. So, you, again, you can call this the Feast of the Lord, or there's going to be a calendar here. We're going to put it up on the board. You'll see there's a calendar here. There's a springtime set. There's three in the spring, 
and then there's three in the fall and there's gaps and breaks in between and we're going to we'll lay all that out tonight get it in your mind then we'll go back and we'll look at the springtime uh, feast and then we'll look at the fall schedule the fall feast and and we'll, we'll hopefully get it all down to a point where you understand what's going on now the reason why this is important is as we lay these things out you'll real quickly begin to see where we're at when the body of Christ shows up and what's going on in Israel's program is that the three spring feasts have all been fulfilled and there's three fall feasts that haven't yet to be have they need to be fulfilled yet they nothing's been done yet so and that's important to understand it and it's really important to understand how God's doing this with them okay uh, but first we need to see why they need to be redeemed uh, Leviticus 26 <clears throat> Leviticus 26, verse 1. Ye shall make you no idols, nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Now Moses is going to give, what Moses is doing here is he's, he's giving them the contract. You guys made the deal in Exodus 19. Here's the details of that deal that you made over there. Because in Exodus 19, he just says real quick, they say, whatever you say, we'll do. And he goes, okay, here are the details. Here's the, the little print. Verse 3, if ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them. Now notice what's going to happen. You see the if there and the then? The contract. If you obey me, Here's the benefits. Then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield her fruit, and your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread. By the way, the vintage and the reaping and all that, that means they have no break. That means by the time they get the, the, the product out of the field... It's time to start planning again, and they've just constantly working. There's no downtime. Why? Because they're walking where they should be walking, and what's he doing? He's blessing them. You remember the parable in the, in the Gospels about the, the guy who, ha, he's got so much stuff, he's got to go out and build more barns? That, this is what, why would he be in that condition? Now, the parable, he isn't. He, he's, he's got his mind in the wrong, his heart in the wrong place. They've been believing him. They've been walking in the world. So, by the way, when you see in, in the Old Testament where there is a famine of rain or a famine of uh, going on, that's because they're not walking they're in the commandments. They're being disobedient. Verse number uh, 6, And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. And ye shall chase your enemies. And they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase a hundred. And a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you. That's interesting. Paul says God's not a respecter of persons. But when does he respect them? When they're walking in the word. When they're obeying him. And make you fruitful, and multiply you, and, and establish my covenant with you. And ye shall eat old store, and bring forth the old because of the new. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you, abhor you. And I will walk among you, and will be your God, and ye shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke. And made you go upright. Look, look at all what I've done for you, and you believe my I'm gonna bless you beyond blessings can just keep the commandments. Now watch verse number 14. But uh oh, if ye will not hearken unto me, and I will not do and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my judge statutes. Or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this on 
to you. Now, if you've got a Schofield Bible or a reference Bible, right above verse, verse, verse 16, you've got what he's got, the first chastisement. And what happens here is you have five judgments now that are going to come up against Israel because they haven't hearkened unto him and they're not doing the commandments. Okay? So you, you got verse 16 is the first one. Verse 18 is the second judgment. Verse 21 is the third judgment. Verse 23 is the fourth judgment. And starting in verse 27 is the fifth judgment. Okay? So there's some judgment that's going to come if they don't hearken unto the Lord. Now, we're not going to spend a lot of time in the judgments tonight because that's not my goal. My goal is to do that next. But it's interesting, verse 14, if ye will not, what, hearken unto me, verse 18, and if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times, what's that next word, more for your sins. These judgments don't go away. They, they keep running, and they just build, and they build, and they build. Now, if, he, if they are going to hearken to his words, then they need somebody there. God's got to send somebody there to do what? To tell them. So each of the five courses have prophets. Now, the first course, starting here in verse 16, comes out of the book of Judges. Judges, the Judges. There's 13 of them. We, everybody knows who? Gideon and Samson, right? Okay. Some of you might know Deborah because she was a judge. Okay. But do you know who the last judge is? Starts with an S. Samuel was. He's the last judge, but he's the first of the prophets. He sets the prophet order up. Samuel is the prophet of the first course of judgment, is Samuel. Okay, The judges are set. They would come on board. Every man did what was right in his own eyes because there was no king in Israel. That's the theme of the book of Judges. The book of Ruth is written right in there at the same time in the Judges, that kinsman redeemer issue. And then you've got Samuel on board. And Samuel comes in and he gives them the word. Do you know who comes? Chapter 19. I'm sorry, verse, um, verse 18. Verse 19. And I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. The breaking of the pride. Do you know who comes on the scene after Samuel? We're talking big guys now. you got 80 years of, of, of what it was like to have a kingdom under David and Solomon. Okay? So after Samuel, you have Ahab, you got Saul comes on. Then you've got David, and you've got eight, and 80 years of parentheses here. Of, of what it is to have Israel to be queen. The queen of Sheba comes up to Solomon, sees the splendor, and she says, never the half was told of, of really what's going on. We have a song we sing about the half wasn't told. Queen, the queen of Sheba to Solomon. Okay? All right. Nathan was there. But Nathan deals with David, and so he's their, he's their prophet. Okay? What happened to Solomon? He died, didn't he? What happened to the nation of Israel? Rehoboam and Jeroboam show up, don't they? And what'd they do? They rend, they do verse 19. They break the pride of your power. The nation of Israel now was broken. Do you know what prophet shows up? Starts with an E. Elijah. Yeah, the second course, 2619, is Elijah. He's the second prophet. Who's after Elijah, prophet-wise? Elisha, third course judge. Third course prophet is Elisha. And when we go, like I said, when we go through, I, I, I want to get all this in your head, okay? <laughs> we'll talk. So the first course is Samuel. Second is Elijah. Third is Elisha. Do you know who comes up after Elisha? A whole bunch of people. Elijah and Elisha don't write. But who does? Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. So the prophets on the fourth course are all the writing prophets. 
Because it's in the fourth course where he says, I ain't going to talk to you no more. That's in the fifth course. What ha what, who, the fifth course is the written word. The fourth course, prophet, is the, prof the writing prophets to get it all down. The fifth course is the written word is there because he ain't talking to them no more. You follow that? Okay. When Nebuchadnezzar takes, and, that, and the fifth course again starts in 37, or I'm sorry, 27, excuse me. If you look at verse 33, he says, And I will scatter you among the heathen. That The fifth course starts under the rule and the reign of Nebuchadnezzar. And who does old Nebi take? He takes Daniel, Isaiah, uh, I'm sorry, Jeremiah. Jeremiah's left in the land. Isaiah's in the land. But Jeremiah, or Daniel goes off. Ezekiel, he takes all those guys. Obadiah, Hezekiah, Jonah, Micah, all those guys are writing in, in the fourth course. They're getting it all written down. That's why Daniel would say, as he sits in the 70 years, by books I learned. He not only did have Jeremiah, but he had them all. He had all the writing prophets. Elijah and Elisha were speaking prophets. They didn't write a thing down. Okay, without kings and chronicles, you wouldn't know what they said. Okay, because the, the folks who, the guys who wrote kings and chronicles wrote it all down, which was probably Hezekiah. <laughs> okay, or Samuel and some of those guys. So why, what, what's going on in these five courses? What's happening to them? Verse 23. And if ye will not be reformed by me, by these things, but will what? Walk contrary unto me. What's their problem? What are these five courses showing Israel? What? It's, they're sinners. They're hard-headed. They're, they're, they're opposite. They're walking contrary. They are children of Adam. They're sons of Adam. Are they sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Oh, yeah, they are. They've got that. But spiritually, what are they? They are sinners. Five in your Bible, by the way, is the number of death. They're dead. They need help. Verse 27, And if you will not, for all this, hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me. They're not walking where they're... They're sinners. And that's the whole... All five courses are designed to show that they are sinners. Israel's condition all through her history is she's a sinner. They're sinners. They're sinners. They are not qualified to be the nation that God has set them up to be to complete His purpose in the Sabbaths, which is to come and dwell with them. They're not qualified. So then how do I make them qualified? How, not me, but God. How do I make them qualified? How are you, Israel, going to get qualified? Now we go to Leviticus 23. Now, before you do, you're still in 26. Look at verse 40. Because at any time, at any point in the courses, all they had to do was verse number 40. If they shall confess their, what? Iniquity. Yep. And the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that, they, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember... No, see the process... Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember and I will remember the land and the land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her. And off you go. At any point in time, all they had to do was do that national confession of their iniquities and God would have stopped it, put them right back into the blessing mode and went on. Okay? Don't forget that. That's why you'll read in Daniel 9, the first part of that chapter, where what is Daniel doing? He's doing the national confession. Why? Because the 70 years are up. And he knows it. He understands. So he does that, and the Lord comes in and says, no, 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 no. You're right, the 70 years on the land, but now we need 70 weeks of some things, which is years, to deal with the people. I'm not going to put a dirty people in a clean land because they're just going to mess it up again. The point is, is if they shall confess their what? their iniquity they are sinners so god says okay how do i clean you up 
Now go to Leviticus 23. You follow that? Kind of go. I don't know why 26 is before 23 information wise, but it is. So I just want to point that to you. Now we're going to come back after we get through with the fee schedule and look at the, the, the course schedule, the judgment schedule. So he gives them seven courses, seven feasts here to observe every year. You've got, you, all right? And tonight what we're going to do is we're going to put them up on the board, let you see them, get you familiar with them, and then we're going to come back and start next week and we'll, look at, we'll go down through them. We'll look at the spring together, we'll look at the fall together, and we'll get what's going on. And then, and then literally, <laughs> come over, you, you, you got Leviticus? Let me, I'm going to show you something. Let me show you something. Go to Luke 6. Because there's something that the Lord does in the Lord's earthly ministry. And, and we're going to look at this when we get over there. Luke 6, 1. And it came to pass on the second Sabbath after the first. So the second Sabbath after the first Sabbath, what do they go do? They're out in the fields and what are they plucking? They're plucking corn, aren't they? And the Pharisees jump all over him, and he jumps back and says, you don't know what you're talking about because you don't understand the Scripture. I'm in Luke 6, okay? There's, a, there's an issue going on on that second Sabbath after the first. And, we know what, and it has to do with that first fruits, the harvest issue that we're going to look at. But in order to understand Luke 6, what do you got to understand? You've got to understand Leviticus 23, Okay? you got to understand what's going on back here before you'll ever understand the Gospels. For our learning, exactly. Okay? <laughs> Alright, go back to, Luke, uh, to Leviticus 23. Okay? So, we're not going to get into a lot of the details. I'm, I just want to give you the calendar, the schedule. Okay? Luke 23, verse number 4. These are the feast of the Lord, even, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In the fourteenth day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. So you have Passover, don't you? And it's the fourteenth day. <clears throat> Exodus says the first, their first month is the month Abib, which is our April. Okay? April. The fourteenth day is what day? Is we're going to have what? Passover, verse six. On the fifteenth day of the month is the feast of unleavened bread. So the next day, uh, I knew I was going to do that because this is going to be too big, and I got to go a long way. Okay, so we're going to have Passover. Okay, that's the fourteenth day. On the 15th day, we have unleavened bread. Feast of unleavened bread. Okay? Verse 9. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the what? All of these are designed for them to be in the land. Okay? Okay? When you come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest, therefore, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the Spirit. I'm sorry, the, the priest. And ye shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to accept for, uh, for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. And ye shall offer that day when ye, ye wave the sheaf of, of uh, sh the sheaf and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. The first fruits, I'm sorry, yeah, the first fruits starts on the 16th. Okay? <clears throat> Unleavened bread is going to run the week. 15 to 21. First fruits is one day. And it's on the morrow after the Sabbath. It sits on the 16th. Okay? <coughs> Verse 15. 
And you shall count your, uh, you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. By the way, this is a Sabbath day, and that's a Sabbath day as well. Okay, there. You, you know how you see that? Go back to unleavened bread. All right, are we ready? You guys there? Go back to verse 6. On the 15th day of the month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Under the Lord, seven days you must eat unleavened bread. In the first day, so what day would that be? Day 15, right? It would be Monday. Okay? Day 15, what kind of a day is that day? It's a holy what? Convocation. It's a Sabbath day. That's a Sabbath day. That's a Sabbath day. On the morrow after the Sabbath, we, start for, we have first fruits. Okay? And clear that up. Because when I said it, I kind of looked up and every, everybody's like, huh? That don't make sense. Okay? Verse 15. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. Where is that? Right here, right? How many days? 49. Hang on. You're fine. Okay. And ye shall, verse 15, And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from that day that ye brought the sheath of the wave offerings, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. What's seven times seven? Forty-nine days later, now, verse 16, even unto the morrow, after the seventh day, I'm sorry, the seventh Sabbath, ye shall offer, uh, ye shall number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Fifty is penta, that's Pentecost. This time, from the sixteenth to the fiftieth, is what is called the Feast of of weeks and the feast of weeks the only day celebrated is the first day and the last day okay you with see that so you got a calendar don't you you know what mo by the way this is month one this is month what month that's month three right or about roughly Okay, this starts in April, so where are we? April, May, June, July, we're in, this is, this is what are called the spring feast. Okay, follow that? Now, we have a gap. And I got to put three more on the back end of that. <laughs> now, we'll, we'll, we'll squeeze it, because it'll be all right. Verse 23, and, uh, Leviticus 23, 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, what are we going to have? On what day? Day one. We're going to have the blowing of the trumpets. What's the seventh month? If April is their first month, so April, May, June, July, August... September, October. See how well we're at? We're in that September, October time. Okay? All right? So these are called fall feast. Verse 24, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, On the tenth day of this seventh month there shall be a day of atonement. So now we have atonement. Okay? And it's on the tenth day. Also on the tenth day of this month, the day of atonement, it shall be a holy convoc... I'm in verse 27... Holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and off you go. Verse 33. Uh, well, verse 32. And it shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. 
For even unto even shall you celebrate your Sabbath. And the Lord spake unto Moses, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the what day? The fifteenth day. So we got some time, right? In the fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles. Okay? Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. So <laughs> tabernacles is going to run out there for seven days tw to roughly the 22nd ish okay and what are they doing so you've got a schedule here don't you do you see a calendar very specific very much very much there now come over to Deuteronomy chapter 16 with me and milk is not here this evening she'll make the tape but she'll enjoy this eventually Brian, I'm sure, will bring it to her attention. Deuteronomy 16, 16. Three times a year. Three times a year, verse 16, 16, 16. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he, hath, which he shall cho uh, choose. In the... Huh? Yeah. In the Feast of Weeks. You see that Feast of Weeks? That's Pentecost. Okay? In the Feast of the Tabernacles, so that's an important one. Pentecost is an important one, and Passover is the important one. Three times a year, what are they going to do? Now, they're going to they're gonna go down, they're going to go and see the Lord. By the way, they were to do Passover every year in, in Jerusalem. Okay? Now, finish verse 16. And they shall not appear before the Lord, what? Empty. Every man shall give as he is able. See that give? Now, we're, now they're going to go down there three times a year, and they're going to have a party, and they're going to have P Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles, and it's a party. And it's a party that the Lord is throwing. Now, come over to chapter 14. Okay, uh, chapter 14. Because what happens is, is there are three tithes in Israel's history, in Israel's program. When people say, oh, we tithe and we give the 10%, they don't know what they're talking about. Okay, the first tithe, and it's here in Deuteronomy 14. Uh, if, you, if you look over uh, at verse 20. Um, well, verse 22, Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, of thy oil, of, and the firstlings of, of, my, of thy herds and of the flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his, uh, to set his name there, when the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it into money, and bind up the money in thine hand, and shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, and thou shalt bestow the money for whatsoever thou soul lust is after, for ox, for sheep, for wine, for strong drink, or for whatsoever thou soul desireth. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household, and the Levite that is within thy gates. Thou shalt not forsake him, for he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. Now watch, and the end of the three years thou shalt bring forth all the tithes of thine increase the same year, and shall lay it upon thy gates. And the Levites, <coughs> because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widows which are within thy gates shall come and shall eat and be satisfied that the Lord thy God may bless. <coughs> Good grief. <coughs> the chalk dust. <laughs> Uh, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all thy work of thine hand uh, which thou doest. There are three tithes there. Okay? The first tithe, three tithes. The first one is on the gross. 
and it's an income tax to the Levites to take care of the running of the government. And it goes right back in. In Malachi, when he says, you're robbing God of offerings and tithes, fill up the storehouses and stuff, he's talking about the income tax. It's on the gross. The second tax you saw there in verse number 26, and thou shalt bestow thy money for whatsoever thou so lusteth after. That's on the net. That's the vacation tax. That's the money that you set aside. This one goes to the Levites. This one goes to you. It goes in the savings account. So every, three, every year you can go have a party. So every year you have the money set aside to do what? Come at Passover, at Pentecost, and at Tabernacles. Okay? Now the third tax is there on the three-year thing there, at verse 28, and that's every three years, and that's to support the welfare program within the nation of Israel. Okay? <clears throat> now, when people talk about tithing, you bring that up. You bring Deuteronomy 14 up to them, and they don't know. They go, huh? What is that? We just thought it was 10%. Well, this is 10, and that's 10, and we'll give that 3 and a half. That's 23 and a half percent. And by the way, Leviticus 1 in chapter number 1, we didn't read it, but they have a free will offering. They can give up, up, up and beyond that. They had a real bang-up bang, bang year. Okay? So when people... T it really works out to be about 20, 25% when you, you know, do all the numbers and carry the 8 and subtract the 9 and all that good stuff. Okay? Math people can do that. But that's what's going on here. But why does he have the tithe there? Take care of the government. Take care of the welfare. But get you to Jerusalem three times a year. Now, if I said the offering box back there is for us to all go on vacation, that thing would be full every Sunday. Right? That one, no. And by the way, did Israel have dietary laws? Go back, go back there and read verse 26 with me. When they're on vacation in Jerusalem, look at what they can do. Whatever so whatsoever thou soul lusteth after, does it lust after ox or sheep or wine or strong? See, they were told to stay away from strong drink. Or whatsoever thy soul desireth, and thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt... Man, the Lord's throwing a big party, and all the rules have been put on pause. You can come and do, you can come and have a big old party. But that's every year they're able to do that. When? Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. That wouldn't be bad at all. Three vacations a year, let's go. Woohoo! And the wonderful, well, not the wonderful thing, but the thing of it is, it's just us guys. It's just the males. Sorry, ladies. I'm not. I know you will. There, you can just see, I, I think about the average Jewish family. And knowing humanity and human nature, the lady's like, is it Pentecost yet? <laughs> is it time for you to go? <laughs> yes, yeah, okay. My point is, is this calendar of feast impacts everything in their life on a daily basis. Come back, if you will, um, well, Leviticus 23. Just look at these guys real quick. <clears throat> Passover. Let me make a little room up here. Passover. What? what Paul says that Christ is our what? Passover. It's the cross, isn't it? We're studying in Luke 20. We're on the way to Calvary, and he's the Passover lamb, isn't he? Presents himself, the nation rejects him, they're out, he's the Passover. That's his death. What happened in Levit in, in Exodus, in the Exodus when they left out of the country out of Egypt? What they what passed over the house with the blood? The the death angel. Okay? He's buried, isn't he? 
That happens on the unleavened bread day. You, if I remember, I'll show you. They go in on, the, on that day and they clean out. Unleavened is not, is, not, is not good. It's corrupt. And they clean it all out of the house. They bury it. They get everything gone. What's the fir- who's the first fruits from the, from, the re- from the grave? He's the first fruit from the death, isn't he? There's resurrection, first fruits. Okay? Now you got some time, don't we? Go over to Acts chapter number 2. You've got some time that's happening. <clears throat> What's in the gap here? Well, it's time for these first three items and for that little flock to get formed, that believing remnant, and for them to mature through the death, burial, and resurrection. For them to get there, Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. And when the day of Pentecost was what? Fully come. Guess what? There's never going to be another day of Pentecost in the fulfillment. There will be in the schedules. Passover is fulfilled at Calvary. Unleavened bread is fulfilled in the burial. First fruits in the resurrection. They're fulfilled. Now they have to keep doing them until we get over here. But they're fulfilled. Pentecost. Who, con- who came at Pentecost? The Holy Spirit. He resurrects, doesn't he? He goes up. The Father says, you sit right here on my right hand till I make your enemies your footstools. And while we're there, if you jump over to verse number 33, and being, uh, verse 32, this Jesus hath God raised up whereof we are all, uh, where, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of who? The Holy Ghost. He has shed forth this which you now see and hear. What did he get? He got the Holy Ghost. And what did he do? He sent the Holy Ghost down there on that believing remnant and said, you guys get going because there's trouble coming and it's fulfilled. It, never to happen again. It's done as far as the main event. Okay? Now you got a gap. Don't you? Now, on our chart, sitting in this gap prophetically is that 70th week of Daniel. Because trumpets come over to Matthew 24. <clears throat> Matthew 24. <coughs> Matthew 24. Because trumpets is something very specific. Okay? You guys with me? All right. In the scriptures, in the Old Testament, a trumpet is blown for, for two reasons. One, to regather the camp. Two, to move it out. Gather, move. Okay? Matthew 24, verse number 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days... Shall the sun be darkened, and the, and, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken? Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So we're, wait, we're on down in the, the 70th week. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a what? Trumpet. Trumpets. And what are they going to do? And they shall gather together together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven. So trumpets has to do with the regathering of that little flock, that believing remnant. He's going to go. By the way, notice who he sends. He sends angels. For you and I, when he comes back for us, he himself comes. (laughs) Personal, mono to mono attention. Here he sends. So trumpets has to do with. The regathering of the nation. Now you come over to atonement, uh, Acts chapter number (coughs) 3. Acts chapter number 3. Atonement happens the second coming. Okay? What also happens at the second coming? Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. 
Acts 3.19. Okay? When he shall come from the presence of who? Of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. The time of refreshing comes on the day of atonement when he comes back in his second coming and he institutes that wonderful covenant that we looked at, the new covenant. That is the day of atonement. Okay? When the day of atonement, when his second coming, ha- it's time for the atonement. It's time for you, for I will... Write my law in your hearts, you'll be my people, I'll be your people, which then floats us right over into the tabernacles, because what does he set up? He sets up the kingdom, doesn't he? Right? Now, come over with me to Zechariah 14. <coughs> the Feast of Tabernacles. <coughs> now, believe it or not, we got more to look at all these. This will just get you introduced to it. Zechariah 14. Zechariah is right before Malachi, right before Matthew. Okay, Zechariah 14. The day, the tabernacle feast is, by the way, happens on a Sabbath day. If we go back to Leviticus 23, where he rests, and what does he do? He brings in his kingdom. Emmanuel, God with us, is now happening. Zechariah 14, we'll start in verse number 9. I didn't put these on your papers, on the handouts, because I wanted you to be able to write them where you wanted to write them in case you wanted to lay out the, the timeline. Do, try to give you room to do it how you do it. Okay? Zechariah 14, verse 9. And the Lord shall be the king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Gibba to Rim, Rimon, south of Jerusalem. And it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, under the corner gate, and from the tower of, of Han, um, Hananel unto the king's wine press. Now he's talking about Jerusalem, and he's talking about restoring Jerusalem. And the men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely, what? Jerusalem is restored, and what happens? Men dwell there, don't they? Verse 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations... By the way, catch that, please. Everyone that's left of the nations which came against Jerusalem. So the battle of Armageddon does not wipe out everybody. Okay? Because there's people left. After the battles are over, Jerusalem is set up. The kingdom is getting set up. Verse 16, uh, That everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year. See that year to year? Even in the kingdom, every year, where do they go? To worship the king, the Lord of hosts. Now watch, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Why? Because God is with us. You go over there in the Feast of Tabernacles. We'll see this when we get back in Leviticus 23. They they set their little booths up. They got little booths. And they go in and they, they dwell in these booths. Why? Because they're in the tabernacle. And this is the Sabbath. That that he set up originally with Genesis. With Adam. To do what? To come and dwell. Now how many do we have? We have one day, two day, three day, four day, five day, six day, seven day of rest. Just kind of happens that way. Yeah, okay. <coughs> huh? <coughs> yeah. So the tabernacles, all about the kingdom reign, they go up and they keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And notice in that verse, they do it every year. Every year. Now, the tab, the king, so the king, just like Pentecost, Acts 2 fulfilled that, the kingdom fulfills tabernacles. Okay? 
back in Leviticus 26, they're sinners. They're under judgment. Chapter 23, it's okay. I'm going to take care of you. Here's how I'm going to do it. I got a time schedule for you. And we're going to lay it right on out for you. And when we do, guess what's going to happen? Everything's going to be fine. You're going to be okay. You're going to be the people ultimately out here. You're going to be that kingdom of priests that I need you to be so I can go out in the world and out into the earth and take care of it. So that's why we started with the Sabbaths. Remember the Sabbath to do what? Keep it holy. Don't you work on it. Why? It's a sign. This is a deal between you and me because I got a the feast of the Lord, a springtime and a fall, okay? Remember we were talking about day and night, night and day. <laughs> we got all that going on here. <clears throat> the feast of the Lord, it's what prepares Israel to be God's people. To in order, enable them to accomplish His purpose and plan in the earth. Now, when you look up there, do you see us? Anywhere there. We're not there. The only place we are is in the gap. Okay? Now, we know we're in the gap because where are we? We're, we're sitting over here understanding the word how? Rightly divided. Through Paul, looking back at this going, wow, we see Calvary. He's, Christ is our Passover. We see the death and the burial and the resurrection. We see that. We see Pentecost. But without Paul, you would what, what's next? The seventh month, it's time to get on with the program. It's been interrupted. Now, looking through Paul, what do we see? Future's coming, future's coming, future to come. Okay? But you can understand now why back here... In the earthly ministry of Christ, he does some of the things that he does dealing with those religious leaders because you know that when the crowd showed up three times a year, the religious guys had their stuff rolled out big time. Okay? <coughs> yeah, overcharging. By the way, that's why in Acts, them being there in Acts chapter 1, <coughs> I'm sorry, in Acts 2, the Holy Ghost there, the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. And, he, and they begin to speak in tongues. You start in verse 9, 10, and 11. You see all those, those lists, the Medes, the Mesopotamia, and all those. That's all of the known world. They had Jews. That's why Peter then says, Ye men of Israel, ye men of Judea, verse 14, and all that dwell at Jerusalem, verse 22, ye men of Israel. Here, Why? Because who's, who's in the crowd? All the men of Israel. Because three times a year, they're called there. they got to be there. Okay. Now, in the Gospels, we'll see this when we study John, when we're going to start studying John on Wednesday night when we're done with Luke. The Lord in His earthly ministry, He'll say, The Jews feast. <clears throat> Why? What have they done to it? They've corrupted it. They've made it into a religious thing. Rather than it being a redemptive thing, they've made it into a fair show of the flesh, a tradition. So he, he quickly, he even removes some of the, my, he doesn't call it my feast, he says the Jews' feast. And why? Because they've messed it up. Now what we're going to do, and they have messed it up, what we're going to do is we're going to come back next week, we'll look at spring, Okay. We'll dissect them down again. Then we'll look at the fall. And then we'll dissect those guys down, okay? All right. Dear Holy Father, we thank you for the, morning, the evening, Lord. We thank you for the study. We thank you for your word. We thank you that we're in the dispensation of grace, that we're able to look back through the, through the eyes and the understanding of our apostle, and we can rejoice in your calendar of redemption for your people and how that, what you're going to do for them you have already done for us because we have received the atonement now. We've already received it. We've received all of this as a present possession and we can rejoice in that one day you'll do it for your people. In your name we pray. Amen.